Hello, and welcome back to part two of building a CMDB integration. My name is Nick Ryan. Hopefully you were able to get comfortable with your source system that you're gonna be integrating with based on some of the points outlined in part one of this series. Today, we're gonna be talking about understanding the data model and mapping that source data into the ServiceNow CMDB data model. We're gonna look at these high level areas. We're here in step two of our five step process. So let's go into a little bit more depth of how we're gonna go about understanding the data model. And so we're gonna take a look at the class manager, which is a, a hierarchical representation of the ServiceNow CMDB. It's also very useful to search ServiceNow documentation and not just look for classes under the CMDB section of the documentation, but it can also be very useful to look at the ServiceNow discovery documentation and see how uh, ServiceNow discovery actually maps into different classes of the CMDB based on the technologies that it is discovering. And if you don't find things very easily that way, Another option is to just search all the tables in the ServiceNow system. Um, so if you open up SysDB object, you'll get a list of all the tables in ServiceNow, and you can pretty quickly search uh, just based on the description or the name or what have you, and maybe find, find what you're looking for that way. Another important consideration here in step two is to understand do I need an entirely new class? Is there something that just doesn't fit anywhere in the ServiceNow hierarchy? Or is it just missing attributes? Attributes are pretty common to be added by customers for their different use cases or workflows. But there are some things to consider around that, which is, do I want to add attributes to an out-of-the-box class? Or do I want to extend an existing class and add attributes to that for my specific uh, needs? And the latter is more of a safeguard on upgrades. So you're not touching the base class, which uh, may have impacts on upgrades, versus if you extend that class, if it is extensible, not every class in the CMDB has the little check mark to say that it's extensible, and we'll take a look at that here in a second. But if it is, um, you might consider just making a, a class specific to your company's needs and adding the attributes to that. A third item that's very important and useful is to understand if you need to have a related list of data points. And as we walk through our example of integrating with the Kong Gateway, we'll see a number of these that we'll have. Uh, some of the ones that exist uh, currently in different places are things like serial number. So that might surprise some folks, but if you look at the actual table, it's CMDB serial number and not CMDB CI serial number, which is a little bit of an indicator that it may not be um, an actual CMDB class. Not that all of them start with CMDB underscore CI, but most of them do. Um, software instances are another one of those where it's a related list of software that's installed or found on a on a piece of hardware, but not actually a, a CI table. And then our last step, and really what we want to get out of this entire part of the process, is to come up with a document that shows us how we're going to map data from the source system into our uh, target CMDB tables. So let's take a quick look at ServiceNow instance. So you can come in, search for the CI class manager. You click on that, it'll open up this. You can see the hierarchy here and start looking for um, what it might be that, that you need. So in our case, we have APIs and API gateways uh, that I wanna map this data into. So I'm just gonna start by searching API. I'll see what that brings up. So I can see here that there's already um, 
this API class and there's something called managed API here. So that's good. Uh, maybe I'll click on this. It's always useful to understand the attributes here and especially um, the added ones. So what this means is that there's all the CI classes in the CMDB have everything that's on the configuration item class. And then, you know, as you start to build out different hierarchies, there are more attributes added at, at each la layer potentially. Uh, it doesn't always have to be the case, but here, let's see if there's any added. So this particular managed API class doesn't have anything new. Let's go back and look at the API class. So here, there actually are some new classes or some new attributes, the base URL, ID type, version, so on. Uh, understanding the identification rules, also very important here, knowing that this ID field is the highest priority identification rule. And then secondary to that, there's a name and version combination uh, that could be used for enforcing uniqueness. I can see that this is an independent identification rule, so that's important to understand as well. So you can populate this API class without having to populate anything else. See about this managed API. So in this case, it's got the same identification rules, but this one is actually a dependent rule, which means that it needs something else uh, to actually uniquely identify it as well. So you can see under the identification rule, if it is dependent, it'll have defined what the dependent relationships are. So in this case, I can see my this managed API class is actually dependent on an API gateway. So this means that I will have to, at the same time that I'm populating this managed API, I will actually also have to provide enough information that I can identify this API gateway class. So that'll actually be important. Let's go ahead and look at that API gateway class to see what it needs as well. So here, that class, it has an ID attribute. It's not dependent on anything else. It's an independent rule. Let's see what extra attributes it might have. So it just has this ID column, which is actually the identification rule for it. That's important. I did see there was another one. So actually, this is convenient for our example. There's actually a Kong gateway class. So this has a couple of added attributes as well. So that's good to know. And this one also is an independent rule. So it's just inheriting, it looks like, for the most part, uh, what was on the API gateway. But then there's these related entries, which are important to understand because it means we can load in these tables um, and, and just reference back to the gateway itself. So there's a couple of items that are specific to Kong here. These other ones look like maybe they're more general and the consumer and the plugin. So, so far uh, things are looking pretty good for uh, mapping things out how I want, but the, the next step is really to understand, all right, what do I want my data model to look like? And so here, there's a lot in this, but going left from right, uh, this is effectively how I, at the end of the process, I want the data to lay out. So I wanna have my gateway, my Kong gateway. It'll have some APIs, which seem like they go more into that managed API class. And then um, the data model, and we didn't, continue to explore this, but we kept looking in the, the class manager, we would see that there's some of these other pieces that are also related to APIs with these front ends, and then they go to these back ends and so on. And there might be multiple front ends that go to back ends. And then in the case of Kong, when I was doing the source analysis, the first step, I saw that actually a, a service, a Kong service, can actually point to um, what's called an upstream in Kong, uh, but it's really just a load balancer that has multiple uh, backend targets behind it. Um, so this will be an important part of my data model to also understand. And then these uh, blue boxes are my related items. So these related items are, are things that aren't necessarily CIs, 
but they are part of the con gateway that I want to capture and store as being related to the Kong gateway. So uh, this is the, the high level view of things, which really now should translate into what we're really after in terms of a, a, a mapping document. And so you may start with something um, less complicated than this, but at the end, it should start to fill out hopefully so that uh, when you go to actually building this integration, you can actually make use of this and follow along and not just have it as a piece of documentation. Um, so uh, I have a list of my tables that I want to populate the gateway. Uh, I know that there's workspaces in Kong, that load balancer and targets we were talking about, my managed API class, back end and front end, and then those consumers and plugins. And so these are the actual formal table names. The data sources don't have to be named exactly like this, but it's uh, useful to be able to identify them pretty easily. And then as we were doing our source analysis in the first step, we did find that there are all of these APIs which can be used. So it's useful just to list these out. Um, in the case of the APIs we're going to use in this example, this workspace is an optional um, part of the, the API that can be used, but it can be very useful in understanding or being able to limit what you query for. So if you, the workspaces in Kong are more of a logical collection that different teams may work on um, to, to group their APIs and the different constructs around it. And so you can uh, potentially limit what you import into the CMDB. Maybe you don't want certain workspaces to be brought in. And so um, we'll see how that plays out when we get to building it. But just to, to note it here that we can inject that in uh, as a limiting point. And then I have a tab for each of the um, each of these CI classes down at the bottom or related tables. They're not all exactly CI classes. Um, but within each one of these, this is where we start the process of the mapping. So, you know, again, in the, the first step of the source analysis, hopefully you were able to grab some example data. Maybe you were able to stand up an environment and run some Postman or Insomnia queries or something like that, or just curl commands um, from the terminal and get some example output. And then you could take that output and start doing this mapping where we say, all right, this is the source system, these first couple of columns, you know, some example data in the second column, but these are the source fields. This is the table I want to map them to. And then here's the service now attribute in the CI class that I want to use uh, to, to store that data. There's a couple of important things that here at the end, this SNK is going to be very important when we actually go into um, the mapping capability within ServiceNow. And SNK stands for source native key. And we'll talk about that in, in more detail, but it's important to know what this is um, because it, it uh, really drives our ability to identify these as well. And so source native key is really what it, what it sounds like. It's a, an identifier from the source system that is unique for that source system. And so in this case, there's not really something I, I, I feel comfortable about in this payload that does that. And so I, I actually am gonna use the sys ID of the connection and credential alias that I'll make um, in, in the build process. So most of the time when we build one of these, we're gonna start with a connection and credential alias so that we can move it between environments, maybe from dev and test into prod. And this connection and credential alias will be used in our um, integration hub actions that we'll create. And so we don't have to modify those because we're using an alias. So that'll be, this will be important uh, and make more sense when we get to this building phase. But this transform section here also um, can be used to just denote, you know, how you might map or concatenate fields together and so on. 
And so we just go through that process for each and every one of the classes. And you may also have notes in here for how to what the relationships need to build out like as well. Uh, so it's important to to know that as well in terms of uh, just in for, especially when in this case, as we saw, the managed API actually has a dependency on the API gateway, which Kong Gateway is a child of that. And so we have to build this relationship as we're loading these managed APIs. And so we, it's going to be important, as this note says, for us to also have the connection alias sysid available in this load process as well. And so just go down the line and hopefully at the end of it, you've got all of your um, tables mapped and can start the process from there. So rounding out, this is our desired state with all of those attributes mapped as we noted there. And the next exercise that we'll go through will actually be to start doing the build process. And I know this was a short video for the most part, but I don't want you to underestimate the level of effort here. This is probably the most difficult part in doing this mapping and potentially creating new tables or attributes. Uh, so take your time at this step, get your mapping down to feel comfortable with, because it will help us streamline the next step of building out this integration. All right. Thank you. We'll see you next time.